everyone welcome to cancer healing journey talks myself sonali modi from community outreach team of zenonco.io and love heals cancer we guide cancer patients on adopting an integrative oncology treatment approach and we help them find the balance between medical treatment and complementary treatment approaches we also help our patients with our team of oncologists lab experts nutritionists and other healthcare professionals so that we can improve the treatment outcome for patients and we also help in connecting patients with other cancer warriors who have gone through this journey to address their queries and we also share inspirational journeys to motivate cancer warriors who are going through this journey currently so firstly i would like to introduce you to today's speaker miss kelly proudfit she is a cancer warrior i am happy that you are here with us today to share your story so over to you kelly please start with your introduction thank you um it's an honor to be here. I was so happy to see a message from you. I just want to say thank you. Um, I'm like happy to be take any part uh, in this. So um, I my name is Kelly. I'm 40 years old. I live in Michigan. Um, I live uh, here with my partner, Jason, and we have a four year old daughter. Um, we both work full time, live pretty normal lives um until two years ago <laughs> yeah so what made you go for the diagnosis and what were the symptoms um so i have a little bit of a non-traditional um cancer story only because i had found a lump on my chest it was like right here i okay. found it like 15 years ago and um as soon as i i was taking a necklace off one night and i and my hand just kind of grazed this little hard area. And I, I thought to myself, has that always been there? Like, what, what, what is this? Um, and so it was like 11 o'clock at night and I called my mother um, and I was like, mom, I found this hard lump on my chest. I don't know what it is. Um, and so I, I called in, uh, a doctor's office in town and was able to get in the very next day. Um, and he um, examined it and, you know, palp palpated it, like, you know, and uh, told me it was nothing. And he said that um, it was, uh, he said it was bony cartilage overgrowth and that it would likely recede over time. Um, and that he would only recommend doing anything further if it um, ever started hurting or would became noticeably larger. Um, mm -hmm. And so I left there, free as a bird. I was like, okay, we're good. Um, and I think like a year or two later, I also had it looked at again. I was at a gynecologist appointment. And before I was, before I left, she said to me, you know, do you have any other questions? Do you have anything you want to talk about before you leave? Um, and I said, I, no, not really. I, I have this lump here that we don't really know what it is, but I had another doctor check it out and, um, and she did the same thing and felt it and wasn't really concerned. And so I went on my way and that was 13 years ago. Um, and in, in August of 2019 was when, um, it, it all just fell apart. Yes. So at what stage were you diagnosed? So I was, um, I was diagnosed with a grade one chondrosarcoma. Okay. And can you share how this news was disclosed to you and your family? Yes. Um, in August of 2019, I was on a vacation with my family and it started hurting constantly. It was throbbing, aching pain. And I, I kind of felt like maybe it was a little bigger. So I actually uh, called my uh, now current uh, doctor and made an appointment. And I had never even told him about this lump because I was not concerned about it. And mm. he's like, How, why have you never told me you had this? And I said, I, I didn't think I needed to. Uh, I've already had looked at a couple of times. And he said, well, let's send you for some x-rays. And so I went right, right from his office and I had x-rays done. Um, and I could very much tell by the demeanor from the woman who took the images that there was a problem. Um, and I went home and about 10 hours later, my doctor called me and said, I need you to go down to the ER right now. Um, we need to have additional images taken immediately. 
And um, he didn't read my x-ray results word for word over the phone to me. And when I finally got into an exam room in the ER, this quite rude um, PA, it was, uh, he read the words to me. Um, and his words were, okay, I'm going to read to you your x-ray results right now, but I need you to take a deep breath because this is not good. Uh, yeah. And he read me the results and it said a uh, malignant neoplasm. Um, and I would need on um, an oncology referral immediately. And it was a rough, rough day. Yes. So how did you all face it? Um, I have an amazing partner. His name is Jason. And um, he's a very stoic and um, very reasonable and calm. And, um, and that really helped me out in that moment because I was, I had, I had lost it. Uh, but all, other than that, I also have a twin sister. Her name is Katie. And um, I, I called her and asked her to come down to the ER that day. And those two really, um, you know, you just have to lean on your loved ones in that moment. You just can't quite get through it alone. Maybe some people can, but mm. I, I don't think I could have without them. It was a mess. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could have been somebody who received a cancer diagnosis in a state of grace and, um, you know, took it like a champ, but I had a absolute breakdown. I was screaming in the, in the exam room, I can't die. I have a two-year-old daughter, please, somebody help me. Just lost it. It was so bad. Yeah, the people who are going to this cancer stage, uh, it's very like emotional for them as well and for the people who are also listening to this story. It's, it's such a, um, it was such a universe shift for me. I remember leaving. So after I found, after they read those x-ray results to me, um, they sent me down for another, uh, some, a CT scan. Mm -hmm. um, and then we went back up to the exam room and we had to wait for those images. And those images came back and, um, and they, they, it was the same. They, they, they believed it was malignant, the tumor. Um, um, and then they sent me down for a bone marrow biopsy. Um, and I was just a mess. I, the, the whole time it was, it was such a shift in my world. And I remember after that bone biopsy and they, they just send you home and they say, you have cancer, but we don't know what kind and we don't know what stage. Um, so we'll call you with the results. And I waited 13 days for those results. And I remember walking out of the hospital that day thinking um, like nothing's ever going to be the same. It was almost like grieving your previous life, like immediately. Um, and I, that was some, that was trauma. I, thinking back now, it was, it was trauma. Yes. So what treatment did you underwent? So my tumor ended up being low grade. Um, and um, the good news is, is that with low grade tumors, oh. they move very slowly. Um, but the bad news is, is that my type of cancer, which is chondrosarcoma, which is um, uh, cancer that starts in the cartilage of your bones, um, it is resistant to chemotherapy. So um, an ideal situation would be they catch the tumor and they surgically remove it and they get it all um, because if, if, it's, if it metastasizes, you can't you can't get it all with chemotherapy, it just, it won't work. So before I went for my surgery, uh, my oncologist told me that his plan was to do a wide, uh, or an excision with wide margins. And uh, he said, if I, if he didn't get it all, that uh, I would need proton radiation. Um, but I got to wake up and I got to hear the beautiful words that we got it all. Um, so I, I really lucked out. I feel like I got off really, really easy. It makes me feel guilty sometimes. <laughs> yes. So like you went through chemotherapy, right? So no. So as of right now, I have not had any chemotherapy. Um, mm -hmm. I'm doing scans right now. Um, and I will um, need 
proton radiation in the future, uh, possibly. Um, but right now, I am. I think I'm in the clear right now. Okay. So, from where did you get your support system along with your family? You know, um, my sister, without telling me, she started a GoFundMe page. And at first I was mortified because I, I didn't want to ask for help like that. Um, but I will tell you that that page um, grew so quickly and people just, they just, they were amazing. They, they want to help you. They, and they want to support you. And it was, it was overwhelming. It, it helped so much. I had never felt love and support like that before. Um, and I mean, the, the, the kindness and generosity and that love, I mean, it, it lit up the, the darkest days in that, in the beginning, especially before we knew if it had spread or not. And um, so my family was my support system, but I really found love and support from people online. I, I made friends. Uh, I've, I have some good friends now who ha also have chondrosarcoma, and I'm grateful. I know there's a lot of negative aspects to social media, but um, it's really given me some special connections with people in the same situation, um, and I, I'm I'm grateful for it. Yes. So, what do people need to expect when they get this type of cancer? Um, that's a good question. So I, I really thought that, um, you treat the cancer, um, and that means whether it's surgery or surgery and chemotherapy, surgery and radiation, and you get it all, and then you just go on with life and then cancer's behind you, cancer's done. Um, and about 12 months after my big surgery, um, I started struggling really bad with um, it, nerves and I had a horrible anxiousness feeling all the time. And I was constantly, every ache and pain, I was certain that it came back and is now spread. And um, that was tougher than, that, that has been the, the toughest part. Uh, besides the initial diagnosis, the toughest part for me is uh, dealing with like the PTSD and, and, and stress afterwards from it, the anxiety. Um, and so I thought that I was losing my mind. I thought I was going crazy. Um, and I finally uh, talked to my oncologist and they set me up with an oncology, uh, oncology um, stress management program is actually what it's called. Um, and it has been wonderful. I talk to a counselor twice a month right now. Um, and I, I say all that to say, think about setting something like that up right away. Even if you think that you'll be totally fine once you're done with treatment or once you're done with your surgery, um, because it has helped me tremendously. And two years ago, after my surgery, I would have never thought that I needed that kind of mental health help. Um, and it really, it really hit me hard about 12 months after my diagnosis. I, I don't, I, it, what I've learned now is that it was PTSD. So to expect those feelings and just go with them, you know, just expect them. It's normal. Um, you're not broken. You're not, you know, you, you're, it's not going to be like that for life. That's been a big learning experience for me. It's, it's trauma, you know, to your brain your body hmm. yes and what do you think is the importance of self-examination and why so um i think it is paramount um i'm sure most do but for me um i i i struggle with this sometimes because i found that lump myself um and i i, I took action what well, i was a young young you know, young, dumb kid. I was 21, I think 21 years old. And I took an, what I was, I, I took action the way I, the way I only knew how, and that was call your mom, 
mm-hmm. and then just have a, a general practitioner check you out, right? Um, now, if that would have happened today, even if it happened today and I was still only 21 years old, there is such an like endless information out there on social media. You can see like up to the minute people who are fighting cancers and you can see their story. You can go to their page and read all about it. And, you know, 15 years ago, I, we didn't have that. And so if you find something, you find a lump or you're not feeling right, I don't tell, you shouldn't Google all your symptoms, but the, the best case scenario is kind of like what happened to me. I found a lump and I was so lucky that it didn't spread anywhere and I got it out. And right now I'm Ned. I'm no evidence of disease right now. The, the quicker you act, you, it can be cured. Maybe, maybe not all of them, but um, I know a lot of people tend to have uh, an ache or a pain or something's not right and they just sit on it because I'm fine or I hate doctors or um, it's not going to be anything but mine was and it could have been really really bad I lucked out so much that it hasn't spread anywhere I still it bothers me to think that how long that sat in my body and it didn't go anywhere so you just you have to take charge of your own body and I think that goes in one ear, not the other for a lot of people, especially if you've never been through a, 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 an illness like this. And, but it's so true, especially after going through this, you have to listen to your body. Yes. And did you make any lifestyle changes during, after the treatment? Yeah. So I, I committed to uh, mental health. Um, so I, I was really scared to have like my first counseling session because, um, I, I just, it was like a really uncomfortable setting for me. And I think a lot of people are like that. Um, but so being able to commit to that today is like a big, um, a big achievement for me. And, um, it's not, as far as lifestyle changes, I just tried, I, I'm living healthier now than I ever have in my entire life. Um, you know, they didn't, they, the cancer I have is, I had was extremely rare um, and there are no known causes of it. Um, like, like, you know, uh, definitive causes. And so I just figured just take care of myself as best as possible after all of this. And that's what I'm trying to do. It's trying to be as healthy as possible, mm-hmm. healthy with my diet and I stay active. I work out five days a week and trying to show my four-year-old daughter uh, some good lessons. Hmm. That's one good thing that's come out of it. hmm. So what all things like helped you in your recovery? Like, can you emphasize on the integrative oncology aspect of treatment plan? Will you repeat that for me? What all things like helped you in your recovery? Like, please emphasize on the integrative oncology aspect of treatment plan. So like, what are things that helped me, you mean? Yeah, in your recovery. So so, um, my counseling has helped me greatly, but you know what else really helped me is, uh, and it sounds so cheesy, um, but staying active, physically active. I noticed even before I uh, started my medication for PTSD and my counseling, and I was really struggling uh, mental health wise with nerves and anxiety about cancer coming back. When I would uh, make myself go and get a workout in, um, I, I felt better for just a little bit of time. You know, it would, it really like pushed those nerves down. Um, and so uh, today uh, staying active is one of my number one um, my number one, it's like number one on my list. And um, I've heard before, you know, prior to this, like, well, you know, exercise helps with depression and anxiety. And, and I knew that, but I never really, I never really put that to work myself. Um, But it has been a big help. And I know that sounds kind of silly, but, um, and my mental health, uh, my counseling has been that so I, I have, I work out regularly. I take a um, antidepressant and uh, counseling. 
um, with my oncology um, counselor has been huge. Mm. And it, it's been a, um, a commitment. All three of those has been a commitment. I, I have to do them all three together um, for me to feel my best. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, those those three for sure. And my my beliefs, um, you know, I I'm a Christian, and um, so that's a, a large part of of my recovery today too. Mm. You know, every crisis in life teaches you a particular lesson. So, what life lessons you got from your cancer journey? I I always tell people um, that the problems that I once thought were problems are not problems anymore. Um, I'm happier tenfold now today than I was two years ago. Um, because when you're told that, when I was told that I had bone cancer and they didn't know where it was and they didn't know, you know, they didn't know what stage it was, they didn't know what type it was, that felt like a death sentence. I, 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 I instantaneously thought that I was, I was gonna die soon. Um, and uh, after the dust settled and my surgery was done, I realized that like life is so good. Life is so good. And there's so much here that I took for granted before, you know, like complaining because I have to go put gas in my car or complaining that I'm, I'm tired in the morning. Like those are all, those are problems, you know? and. I just don't complain as much. And I, every day I'm just happy. I'm, I'm happy to wake up and I'm happy to be here. And I, I took all of that for granted before this. You know, gratitude seems to be the biggest strength to fight this kind of situation. So it, what yeah. were, yeah. So what were you ever so grateful for that made you always calm down after thinking of revisiting that memory? Um, I am so grateful to my body. <laughs> I know that sounds ridiculous, but, um, I am so, I, I, I'm still, sometimes I'm in shock and taken aback that, that tumor sat there for so long, um, and didn't go anywhere. And I just, it, it made it, it I, I'm amazed at my body, how it was able the, the surgery was brutal it was the most brutal recovery I, I've never been through something like that and I'm just so grateful to be here and have air in my lungs and I'm here to be able to raise a child and you know I I like again I would I would complain about having a headache or my muscles are sore and those aren't problems and we're lucky growing old is a privilege and we are lucky to be here and I'm just so grateful and I'm I'm also grateful for um the team that I saw at the Mayo Clinic they were amazing and they didn't talk to me like I was just a name on a clipboard you know um I mean they truly were amazing I don't I don't think they could have made it go any better than it did because not only did they get that cancer out of me but they treated me so kindly and it made a big difference. Yes. So I'm so, grateful for that as well. So what is that one thing you would want to share with all those who are still fighting this battle? Um, I would say that things will get better. Believe me. Even if you have a, a really, really long, rough road ahead of you with chemotherapy, it will get better. We're not gonna, you're not gonna die in this moment. There's a, there's a whole lot of life left. There's a whole lot of fighting to do. Um, when I was given that um, diagnosis, it just, it felt like somebody was leading me to my death. You know, felt like somebody was walking me to the gallows. It was time to die. and that's not it and it, it will feel like that in the moment in the beginning but it really does get better mm. it really does and the, the the support that you surround yourself with um let them let them support you let people help you know when when our loved ones are in a crisis like that we want to help you know 
And I think a lot of people try to say, no, 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 that's okay. You know, I, oh, thank you, but no, I'm good. Um, and that was there, that was very much me prior to getting, getting cancer. And I kind of like relinquished that pride and let people help. And it, it made the experience so much better. You know, it, it felt so good to have people caring and ready to like fight with me, you know? Yes. So what was the pivotal turning point in your life? Um, I guess I, I, I will, the pivotal moment in my life regarding this was that day in the ER, that diagnosis um, mm-hmm. for, for good and bad reasons. Um, it, it did a permanent, a permanent switch in my brain. Um, and I am just now, uh, I just feel like I see things more clearly um, and with the appreciation that I have for life now, um, that was a, a paradigm shift for me was that day, that day in the ER, it, it um, changed everything. Um, some, some in the beginning, some of it was for the bad. I, I found myself like instantly grieving this previous life where I didn't worry about this stuff, you know, because after you have cancer, you really worry a lot in the beginning about it's going to come back or what's this ache and pain or what's this ache and pain. And, um, I was grieving that life prior where I, I was aloof. I it, it, ignorance was bliss. I wasn't worried about cancer, you know, mm-hmm. because after a cancer diagnosis, you, it's, it's part of your life almost forever, you know, um, and, and not, not front and center all the time, right? Um, but it will be a part of your life from here on out. And I, I first, I, I just was so angry and I was grieving this loss of this previous like innocent life that didn't have cancer, you know, um, just destroying it. Um, and that took some time to work through that grief. Mm. Uh, but that was that day was was pivotal in my life, and it's it's given me a lot of um, lessons. G- good, you know, it's not all bad. Mm. Can you share an act of kindness that you will never forget? Um. Yes. Um, oh man, I I have a few of them, but um, do do, do you want, in regard to my cancer journey? Yes. Um, I had a girlfriend. So where I live, I was eight hours drive away from the Mayo Clinic where I was um, being, I was there for two weeks in the hospital after my surgery. And a friend of mine um, was hours away and she surprised me and showed up there in one of the worst moments of my hospital stay. (laughs) It was horrible and I was in excruciating pain and I was miserable and lonely and scared and just showing up there and giving you a familiar face that of someone you know and love and they did nothing else but just come there to support you it's so easy to these acts of kindness it's it doesn't take anything at all and it means the world and and it, it's something I will never forget. These people, the people who reached out in the smallest of ways, um, I will never forget a single one of them, none of them. And that, that will stick with me. She drove hours and she just popped her head around the corner of my hospital room. And I broke down crying because I'm all emotional and I'm all doped up. And, um, and I'll always remember that. Yes. So how just a do small you- act. Hmm. So how do you feel more positive? Um, I feel positive now because um, that the lesson that we had just talked about, about how um, in the moment you feel like your world is burning down, right? You feel like um, you're, you're, you're being led to your death. Like right now you're going, you're going to die. And um, once that all settled, I, and, and I had my surgery and I came back and now I'm doing my scans. I never realized how strong I was ever. I would never give myself credit. I, I'm very self-deprecating. I don't 
you know, and um, I would have never called myself a strong person. Um, and I, I never, I never gave myself any credit for it. And after everything, and a lot of the um, depression and PTSD that I suffered afterwards, um, I, I am strong. I never realized it. And we don't give ourselves enough credit. You know, we don't, we don't, we don't say these things to ourselves. And, mm -hmm. and um, that's like one of the biggest positives is I can get through anything. I, I can do that. I got that. I can do it. You know, and, and this journey has really proven to me, you know, you can, the brain and the body can get, go through really bad trauma and the human will, the human spirit to, to push on. Um, it was never more evident to me than after this, after this. Yes. So what is the thing that you appreciate or love about yourself? Um, I, uh, I feel that I am an empathetic person. Um, I hate seeing somebody sad. I hate seeing somebody hurting. I want to hurt with them. If, if you know, if, if you're going through something, I, I want to go through it with you. Give me some of that weight to carry for you. I will carry it with you. We can do it together. Um, I, I feel like that's one of the strong, good characteristics in me. Um, I, I probably wouldn't have said that prior to all this because I never recognized it. But now that I have met, made some friends who are going through cancer right now too, um, it's never been more clear to me that I, 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 I feel their pain, I know their pain, and I don't want their hearts to break alone. I don't, I don't want them to feel like it's time to die and you're alone and, you know, and I feel like that's another good that came out of it. Yes. So what was that one thing on your bucket list which you did after your cancer journey? <laughs> uh, you know what? I just ate a whole lot of carbs. <laughs> I didn't have time to do a bucket list item at the time. So, uh, but I enjoyed any and all foods. I can promise you that. Yeah. We spend so much time being like, oh, I shouldn't eat that. Or I can't eat bread. And I, why? It's, we're, it's life. You know, I mean, I know some people have to, you know, watch it for, you know, medical dietary reasons, but I went to town on sweets and breads. Yes. So like, how do you relax or calm down yourself? Um, I read a lot. I guess that's kind of lame, but in terms of if I'm having a, um, one of my, I call them my attacks when I, I hit really high stress. Like I have scans coming up this month and it's always uh, up and down for me with scans where one day I'm like, I got this, it's, we're good, it's clear, you know, and then tomorrow I'm going to wake up and I'll, I'll be in a really bad place. Um, and I guess for me, um, I, and I think for a lot of people that deal with cancer, staying active as much as you can, some people can't who are going through cancer, but um, if I sit around and with my brain and Googling recurrence rates for chondrosarcoma um, and Googling survival rates for chondrosarcoma, um, I'm gonna end up in a pretty dark hole. So stay active. Even if it's an easy walk, go walk around the block, you know, um, getting my, my heart rate up and my blood moving um, really makes a difference. And that's never, you know, I think that's kind of goes without being said, right? We know that if you stay active, you'll feel better. But um, I never, I never thought seriously about staying active for um, my mental health and for anxiety until all of this happened. Yes. And um, yeah, staying active makes yeah. a huge difference. So how did you manage your personal and professional life? Uh, just barely. 
Um, I, I was working full time at the time and there was a 13 day window in between when they did the bone biopsy um, and then the results came in um, and that was just hell on earth. Um, it was just, it felt like an eternity and 13 days was just so ridiculous, long, ridiculously long. And so I was just hanging by a thread at work. I hadn't told anyone yet. And I was so busy with work. I was just buried. Um, and it just really, really felt like one of those times where I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a breakdown. Like I'm, I'm going to have a, like a psychotic breakdown. I can't handle the stress that I'm under right now. Um, yeah. And, uh, so I just barely balanced those. Um, you know, what was, you know what I found out though, Uh, for those 13 days, I didn't tell anyone what was going on. And I learned that over after I got my diagnosis, I still didn't tell people for, I don't know, a few, a couple weeks before, because it, it let, it took about a month for me to get my surgery done. So about two weeks after I got that official diagnosis, I started telling people at my work and, um, it actually helped me, you know, I felt for some reason, I felt like inherently like private about it at first. Like I can't, I shouldn't be telling people this. And, um, but I started feeling better after I, after I told them, it's almost like cathartic to tell them and get this weight off. And it, they, it was just more support, more love and support coming in, you know, Mm. but in the beginning, I did not balance it very well. I wish I could have balanced it a little better. Nice. So what are the stigmas attached to cancer and the importance of awareness for it? You know, I, I learned early on that as far as the stigma goes, um, people who are diagnosed with cancer, your, your friends around you, they instinctively want to ask you what's, you know, what, what, what are, what, what's your diagnosis? They want to know what's your prognosis. Are you going to die? Like, what do you have to have chemotherapy? And, um, I had a lot of people in the beginning say, oh, you have cancer. Oh yeah. My, my aunt died of breast cancer or, oh, you have cancer. Oh, well, I don't have it in my immediate family, but my, my cousin died of colon cancer. And I think this stigma I don't know if it's so much a stigma, I guess, but that be careful what you say to cancer patients in the beginning. You know, I think there's this, maybe this stigma of like, people just want to pepper you with questions. They want to ask you a hundred things, you know, um, and just be, I would have rather, rather heard people say like, you know, you got this, what can we do to help? Okay. Let's kick this cancer. Let's do it rather than, oh no, I'm sorry. Oh, my aunt died of cancer. Oh, I'm so sorry, you know. Oh, my boyfriend's mom died of cancer. And um, and I guess that's not really a stigma, but that was one of the things I remember wanting to bring up. And I I guess for actual stigmas, um, sometimes you can't see a a sickness, you know. Um, You know, people go through cancer, they don't all look like they're, going through active chemotherapy, you know, um, you know, a lot lot of cancers, you, you're not going to see them. You're not going to see the effects physically on someone. Um, you know, somebody said, well, you don't look sick. Well, thank you. You know, but not all cancer patients are going to look sick, you know? So I guess that would be a stigma. You know, if you have cancer, you're not always going to be missing hair and, you know, losing weight. Um, but that doesn't mean that you're healthy inside, you know? Mm, yes. So if you have to sum up your journey in one sentence, then what would that be? Um, things will get better. Yeah. That's it. Things will get better. Um, that's it. It, it. it really is not going to feel like hell forever. It's not going to feel this awful, this horrific. It, it will pass. You will feel better. Mm. 
and zen onco.io like it works towards the betterment of cancer patients through integrated oncology so what are your thoughts on the same will you repeat that for me i'll, I'll try to hear it again yes zen onco.io we work towards betterment of cancer patients like we help them from their diagnosis to forever journey like through integrated oncology treatment so what are your thoughts on the same my thoughts on the organization yes it is incredible um one of the and I'll, I'll tell you a story a quick story as to why i think it's incredible is because 15 years ago when i found this lump if i would have pushed to have a cancer diagnosis um i would never have found organization support like this you know what i mean there this wasn't there and it's it does everything for cancer patients what did i do the second i got home from the er after my bone biopsy i got online and i looked for hashtags cancer chondral sarcoma you know recovery uh terminal cancer you know all the things that i thought would maybe be me mm -hmm. um and it helped so much. I can't ever put into words how much it helps to have organizations out there like, like yours. It, it, it will help people in their darkest moments, hours and days after a diagnosis. They can be connected to people who are going through the same thing, the same exact thing, and, and, or people who are professionals at supporting and, and, getting, helping people get through it. Mm. It's amazing. It's amazing. Mm. Yeah. So thank you so much, Kelly, for your kind words. And thank I you. Hope, yeah. And I hope this session really motivates people out there who are traveling or being traveled through this cancer journey. It inspires, it inspired us. And it will also inspire a lot of cancer warriors and caregivers who are going through the same journey. So it was lovely having you here today with us on this session. So thank, once you again, so thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was lovely to meet you.